systems analysis. Now, this section riffs a little bit on the systems development lifecycle section from AS. And in this unit, we need to describe different appropriate approaches to analysis and design, including waterfall and agile. So what are these methodologies then? Well, waterfall is the traditional sequential design process methodology. You've probably used this in development of your year 13 unit five project. You may have used it in other subjects. You've certainly used it throughout your career in school. It's where you go through a series of steps to design and develop an idea before building, testing and installing it. Now, this waterfall model is a very traditional and almost an old fashioned methodology. In fact, it was old fashioned when it was designed in the 1960s. And that's because developers are required to draft the entire requirements up front. If we just look at how the waterfall model works, we move from section to section and we can't move on until we've completed the previous step. So for instance, we start with a feasibility study, which is where we get an idea if the project is feasible, is it worth doing? And if it is, we can move on to analysis where we collect information through interviews and observations and things like that, that are used to come up with a bunch of requirements. Once we've got those requirements, we design and plan out what we're going to do. And once we finish the design for the entire system, we build it. We don't do any formal testing until the entire build is complete. And once the testing is complete, we go on to install the software, evaluate it, and then go into a cycle of maintenance with the software. We keep it up to date and we improve it. So there are some clear advantages to the waterfall model. And the first is that very strong documentation is created at every stage. A feasibility study report is produced before we move into analysis. At the end of analysis, we have a requirement specification. At the end of design, we've got a massively comprehensive list of designs that shows us how to create every single step of the system. And because of that, everyone who works on the project knows exactly what they'll need to do and when. Clients then, people that are paying us to build things, know exactly what to expect and when to expect things. But Waterfall has some significant problems, which is the reason it's not really used in the real world that much anymore. The first thing is that if requirements change at any stage, you can't just jump back to a different stage. You need to work your way back and through again in order. If you don't understand the initial requirements and they're poor, then the project will likely fail. And this is very common in modern development because whilst we want to design and develop something, we may not be 100% understanding of what the requirements are before we get involved in the project. And projects are only tested thoroughly once completed. So bugs can affect massive amounts of code and development time and require massive amount of efforts to rework. And if the client changes their mind, then you must work through all the stages again in order before you can get back to where you were. A more modern methodology is the agile methodology. And this is where we have an incremental development approach. And we start with a simple design and we work on small modules at any one time, iterating through it, almost like a loop. We do a quick analysis, a quick design, a quick build, a bit of testing, and evaluate where we are before we go back into analysis and improve upon that. Now, Agile also includes various other methodologies. Sprints are big chunks of time where all we do is develop. Extreme programming is where we scrum, is where we get together at the start to have a quick meeting about everything we're doing so everyone's aware of what they're doing and the requirements for each day. Paired programming is where you work with another member of your team, one who is the navigator and one who's the driver who's doing the code, and that allows you to pick up problems and issues. And there are a bunch of other things with Agile that allow you to do things in different ways. Now, of course, the positive things about Agile are that changes can be made after the initial planning phase because we keep looping around and iterating on it. Changes can be incorporated into the next version that we prototype. Testing's done during development, so bugs only affect smaller bits of code. It really suits smaller teams because there's more communication and there's more small amounts of work happening all the time. And customers and developers tend to work closer together because we need that customer's feedback more regularly. It also suits situations where the goals are unclear or the goalposts are potentially moving. Sprints are a really useful thing because after a period of time where all we do is program and test and fix, it's a really obvious point to stop, reflect and review before we move back into prototyping again. There are some issues though. The clarity of the structural process is worse. So 
adding a person to the project midway is quite difficult because they'll need to try and understand what's going on. There's no clear documentation there as to what they should be working on and what sort of time scale. And time scales themselves are difficult to predict because we haven't got a fully developed picture about what we need to build to get to the end of this project. The next objective is to know a little bit about the documentation and explain at which stage of the development which pieces of documentation would be produced. So let's have a look at the documentation. We've got a requirement specification, which is a big list of things that the project needs to do to be considered a success. Your design documents, your flowchart, your pseudocodes, your entity relationship diagrams, all that sort of thing that explains how the system must work. Then a review or validation of that design. Is it effective? Does it work? Technical documentation, which is written for future people improving or working on the software that you're writing at the moment, explaining how it works on a technical level, and user documentation, how to use it from a user's point of view. And this is where they all slot in. The requirement specification is part of analysis. It's the final documentation as part of that evidence gathering, understanding what the problem is process. Design reviews and validations are all part of, shockingly, design, because it's all part of doing that job of planning out what we want. Technical documentation and user documentation then can take place in any of these areas. Usually, it's worked on during implementation, testing and installation, because there are going to be parts of each documentation that refer to these areas, but also, you don't want to leave your documentation until the end of the development process, because then you have to try and remember everything that was built. It's better to write documentation as you go.